Psalms <clears throat> chapter 50. A Psalm of Asaph. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun, it's the east, unto the going down thereof, west, east to west. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Well, out of Zion will be where the Lord Jesus Christ sits. From there will be brightness, the light of all light. John chapter 1. Our God shall come. Second advent. And shall not keep silent. Out of his mouth goes a sword, and the sword is the word. So we're in the second advent passage here. A fire shall devour before him. Read Joel chapter two. You think that you think that little baby that was born in Bethlehem when he comes back, you think he's gonna be a cute little baby? You know, scripture with scripture, study to show thyself approved under God and workman that needs not to be ashamed, right and defying the word of God. You're getting more information than is read in Revelation nineteen. You are reading that the the passage says that from Jesus Christ a fire. How would you like to burn up with fire from the Lord Jesus Christ and end up in hell? And if we if we see firemen next week, Lord willing, and Lord grant us the time, that's one of the things I'm going to preach about: fire in hell. Imagine someone dying on this planet in flames and then wake up in hell. There's no relief. Shall devour before him. And it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth. That he may judge his people. He'll judge the Jews. He's going to come into this planet and pick up those Jews that were they're supposed to be in the wilderness. Those Jews that are in the wilderness, Revelation chapter 12, when the Lord comes, those are the ones who will be saved. What must a Jew do to be saved at the seven, around the, the, the three and a half last year? Well, the last three and a half years of the tribulation. What must a Jew do to be saved? He must get down to the wilderness. He must come out. Gather my saints together unto me. Now whether those be the, the Jewish people in Revelation 12 or us behind him. Remember, when they questioned Jesus, the, the, the Sadducees, you know, this, this all these seven guys died. Who's going to get this woman in heaven when they're dead? Jesus said, listen, when, when God spoke, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's not the God of the dead. We'll be forever saints that are born again and, and are saved. Because we don't die absent from the body, present with the Lord. That they may, uh, that though, try it again. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have a made a covenant with me by sacrifice. It's got to be the Jew. Because the sacrifice is coming back in the tribulation. And the heaven shall declare his righteousness. How? At the end of the seven years of, of the tribulation, there's no more sun. There's no more light. There's no stars. They've, they've fallen from the sky. There's no light of moon. It's become as the blood of, of dead men. And all of a sudden, you look off, and here comes that light at the end of the tunnel. Flames. For God is judge himself. Selah. That Selah, again, is the second advent. And we've been seeing it all the way through. Jesus Christ is coming back the second time, not to save, to judge. He said the first advent was, was a division. 
mother against daughter, daughter against mother, son against father. Listen, I mean, not everybody believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not, every, not everybody in the church, you know. You get you get somebody in church, they do right, and the people who don't do right hate the people that do right in a church. Never mind a family. Here. Listen up. Oh, my people. Who is that? Who would that be during the tribulation and towards the second advent? That is not the church. That is Jews. That's not talking to Gentiles. There's only one way I see a Gentile would get saved, and you can show me other script. A Gentile would be saved by nations and their attitude towards the Jew. Matthew 24, 25. You know, we want to make all kinds of money and sucker the Christians to buy all this. I don't know why Christians are sucker buying those movies. Anyway, you ain't going to be there. And I will speak all Israel. Got it? that make it clear? I will testify against thee for all the wrong they've done. I am God, even thy God. They've been having all kinds of gods since Jesus. They've been having all kinds of gods since before Jesus. And there's going to be some Jews in tribulation that the Antichrist is going to be their God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices. Oh, they're coming back. The sacrifices are coming back. Or thy burnt offerings. To have been continually before me. I will take no bullet out of thy house. He's not going to take an he's not going to take an offering when he comes back. We read last night, you're not going to, to buy off God for somebody else, or even for yourself. I will take no bullet out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy fold. For every beast of the field is mine. The cattle upon the thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains. And Jesus said the fa that the father, he, he tends the funeral of the sparrow. He says, listen, aren't five sparrows or, or sparrows sold for five, whatever the price is? God knows it. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. Proverbs 15, 8 and then 21, 3. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Now, I got a question. The world is mine, and that's God speaking. Where does man get off charging for land? Is that, is that something that God gave man to do? I will, will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? No, he's not going to drink the blood of goats. That's, that's forbidden. But those were, that was the blood and the meat offering at the offerings. This is what God wants. Offer unto the Lord thanksgiving. America does that only once a year. And now they don't even give it to God. They change the whole story. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. Oh, Lord, if you get me out of this, or Lord, if you do this, then you go on with your life after God does it. What's the Lord want? And call upon me in the day of trouble. When a Christian gets in trouble, who's the first thing he calls? Supposed to be God. 
I will deliver thee. Hmm. And thou, thou shalt glorify me. So let's get verse 15 down here from that. When we're in trouble, we're supposed to call upon God. And God will deliver us. He'll he take, he take care of us. And then we're supposed to turn around and glorify Him. You know what's lacking in the church? Testimony time. You go to church and, did you hear the score from that thing? Or did you, you know, blah, blah. And it's everything but God. It's about the worldly stuff. Because that's where you run to, the world. But on to the wicked. Uh-oh. Verse 16 changes paragraph. We've been talking about God's people. Now we're going to talk about the wicked. But on to the wicked saith. God saith. This is God speaking. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? You don't have anything to do with my statutes. You don't have anything to do with my covenant, you wicked people. You don't obey what I tell you to do. Seeing thou hatest instruction. That's why a wicked man is wicked. He will not do what God tells him to do. And castest my words behind thee. They take no regard for what the word of God is. What do you do with a man that changes God's word? Hit him right there in verse 17. He hates instruction. Takes his words and casts it behind thee. And that's happened in churches today. Listen, people like me are putting videos out there or actually per preaching cheap and teaching churches about what things are wrong in a church today and no one's listening now I know the Jehovah Witnesses don't celebrate holidays and all that but I'm going to tell you something and they say in their church you're not to do it but I'm not going to say you're not going to do it but I'm going to tell you right now your Christmas stuff are going to suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ you have a free will to do it or not, but I'm going to tell you, God's against it. And there's a time coming up pretty soon, that Easter. It is completely 100% pagan. The holiday we're to celebrate, they don't go for holidays, but there are holy days in the Bible, Passover. <clears throat> Why don't you set up your church to completely understand Passover? Sunday school classroom, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday school, preaching, and then teaching. It's all about Jesus. You couldn't find Jesus in Easter because he's not there. When thou sawest a thief, then thou contendest with him and has been a partaker with adulterers. Adultery is one of the, the big ten. Partaker. Thou, gave it, thou givest thy mouth to evil. Evil speaking. It ain't just, you know, oh, cussing. It's everything that comes out of your mouth that's wicked. Everything. Lies. And thy tongue frameth deceit you use your mouth to trick somebody out of something that's the American salesman whatever he sells 
They'll give you a line of bull so you buy their stuff. And there are salesmen schools that teach them. Say whatever it is to get that. Yeah. And the Bible just said you're wicked. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Uh-oh. That happens in the church. And what did God say? Verse 15. The wicked. The seventh thing that God hates in abomination is sowing discord among the brethren. You know, you can be a born-again, saved Christian and still be wicked. You know, because you're saved doesn't mean you have this force field that wickedness can't come in you. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Hmm. Now, the whole context of verse 50 is Jewish. And what you've seen so far in verse 16 down to 20 is a violation of the law. We're not talking to church people here. I, I, I say Christian, you know, for, for our lives, some of this stuff can apply to Christians. But the context of this is a Jewish person. What did Jesus say if you call your, you call your brother Rekha? Oh, okay, now we're getting, now we're seeing, Matthew's not for the church. Christ had not died. He was not buried. And he did not raise, the, uh, raise from the dead to after the book. The end of the book. Be careful where you run for scripture. Well, this, what we see right here, thy own mother's son, is when Jesus speaks about, go run the pastors about, if any man call his, call a man Rekha, he shall be in danger of hell fire. What, 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 what did it say over here about fire coming out of his mouth? These things hast thou done. guilty the judge says you're guilty and I have kept silent contents of the, of the chapter seven years maybe the church age slain is thy own mother's son what about all those people that came up to uh, the Sanhedrin there and testified against Jesus? He was his mother's son. He was a Jewish man. And he kept silent when he stood before the Sanhedrin and when he stood before Pilate. Uh-oh. Thou thoughtest thought thought that I was altogether such and one as thyself. But I will reprove thee. Jesus did not judge when he came on this planet the first time. He did not judge when he was glorified to heaven. And he's been silent ever since. To the Jewish people. Well, old brother, you wait to those Jewish people when he comes back the second advent. You know what? You know the worst person in the world to be at the second advent? The worst person ever to be is a Jew that Jesus will send to hell. Because they're supposed to know. God had given them great life. Matter of fact, he had given them Jesus, his own son. But I will reprove thee, second advent, and set them in order before thine eyes. The guilty are going to see it. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, least I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver without remedy. 
Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation and conduct upright will I show the salvation of God. When you do right by what God tells you to do, and you do what God tells you to do, you're not going to be as the wicked man. And God's going to tell those Jews somehow, Revelation 12, head down the wilderness. There is a place for me to prepare. Jesus said in Matthew, when you see that the abomination and desolation, run! Not all the Jews are going to obey. There's a quite possibility in the tribulation period with Matthew writing as he does. Maybe the Jews, maybe some of the Jews are going to acknowledge the New Testament. They won't today. You can read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and all the epistles and letters of, of Paul and Peter and James and Jude and, and uh, Hebrews and all that. and Revelate. They're not going to listen to you. They'll just come out and they'll the same thing. We don't believe that. We don't believe your New Testament, and it's true. And tribulation is going to be different. We close. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through out the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art and when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art.